Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Brooke Brown coming with your word for today, our spiritual nourishment so that we are becoming spiritually fit. We are changing, we're growing, we are progressing by the word of God, being impacted by the word of God so we can impact the world. And so again, get your pen, get your paper, get your highlighter, get your Bible, get ready to take notes so you can go back and study after we go through the verses. We are still in the book of Genesis. If you have been missing these sessions, please go back and check out the other videos, watch the sessions, meditate on the chapters, get these principles. This is the beginning. Genesis is the beginning. And it's the beginning of so many things and people and languages and sin and everything. The beginning when we hear first about God's plan of salvation. And, you know, all of the beginnings are here, the beginnings of God's people. And so check out the other chapters as we continue to go. We are continuing to grow. So we are in chapter 21, beginning at verse 22. But I want to remind you that this is spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. So so even though we go through the scriptures on here Monday through Friday minimum, we also have our morning prayer. So if you've not yet been a part of that, please check out the information underneath this YouTube video and feel free to join us for morning prayer Monday through Friday. So. We are going straight to the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would just cause your Holy Spirit to take over and be our teacher. Minister to us individually and collectively. Help us to grow in your word, to grow in faith, to grow in purpose, to draw near to you that you would draw near to us. Father, help us to have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that we receive your word with gladness, Lord God. And Father, that we meditate on it day and night, that we can become the men, the women of God you purpose us to be. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, Genesis chapter 21, we are beginning in verse 22. And if you remember correctly, we finished off talking about Ishmael when um, Hagar and Ishmael were driven away um, and, and put out of Abraham and Sarah's home. And so, um, so God comes and he um, lets Hagar know that she is taken care of. Her son is taken care of. Um, we are reminded um, that, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> we are reminded that Ishmael uh, is in the wilderness, that he uh, becomes uh, an archer. And so we know that um, as we are going through the word, we are reminded that uh, it, that Ishmael was already, it was already told to Hagar, earlier on in the chapters that he was going to be a wild man but because he is the seed of Abraham because he came from Abraham God promised to still bless him and make him a nation and so we are going forward in chapter 21 verse 22 and it says and it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and uh Fickle the chief captain of his host spake unto Abraham saying God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now, therefore, swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. Now, first of all, just here, just to know now, Abimelech is a name that is used a few times in the Bible. Um, what the teaching is, as we look through, is that oftentimes it is taught that Abimelech is simply a title for Philistine kings. We know that as we go further into the chapters, we will then see when Isaac is an adult. And Isaac does the same lying thing that his father did about his wife, um, being his sister, but he is um, in contact with an Abimelech, which is not the same Abimelech. But again, it is thought to be the title of just various kings of the Philistines. And so I say that to say this is not necessarily his name, but he is dealing with the king. And the king is recognizing Abraham as one of, uh, who is, um, you know, blessed by God. And when we read this and it says um, 
that he says to him, God is with you in all that you do. This is what he says to Abraham. Now think about this. And there's, you know, a few instances in the Bible where people can recognize the people of God, even though they themselves were not Israelites, were not people who really follow God, but they could recognize that these were people of God. Uh, another example will be when we uh, get uh, in chapters 37 and beyond, that when Joseph is uh, serving in Potiphar's house as a servant in Egypt, that, you know, it was evident that God was with Joseph because Potiphar's house was blessed because of Joseph. And then when we look at Jacob, you know, uh, we are, you, when we get to that part, right, when he is staying with Laban and he is, he marries Laban's daughters, but, but the, but Laban's house is blessed because Jacob is there. And so if we can walk in such a manner that people know that whatever we do, God is with us, whether they want to believe God or not, that they can recognize that God is working in us, through us, for us, that whatever we do, God is in the midst of it. Oh, what a blessing it is to live a life like that, where we are really showing the world who God is. That is the whole purpose of us being here. Once we receive Christ and we are adopted into God's family, our whole purpose is to reveal the Lord to the world, to a dying world, a, a, a dark world, a sinful world, that we are introducing him. But it's not enough just to tell people. We have to show people. We have to show them faith in action, love in action, the word of God operating in us and through us, that because we belong to him, that he gives us favor and opens doors and that we have the joy of the Lord in us. So he could see that whatever Abraham did, God was with him. And so he's saying, so swear to me <laughs> that, you know, you won't deal falsely with me or my son, my grandsons. He's saying, be kind to me the way I've been kind to you. And remember, you know, that, you know, Abraham had lied and said that Sarah was his sister. And, you know, and then Abimelech had an encounter with God and was told, give her back. You know, even though Abimelech didn't even know that that was really Abraham's wife, uh, he was given an opportunity to give Sarah back before he would commit a sin. And so he knows that God is looking out for Abraham. He knows that God, you know, is looking over his promise with Abraham. And so he's saying, swear to me in God's name that you won't deceive me or my children or my descendants because I've been loyal to you. Because when, when Abimelech found out that Sarah was actually Abraham's wife, when he found out what was going on, when, you know, uh, he began to, he, he gave, you know, uh, Abraham land. He gave him animals. So he's saying, because I've been loyal to you, swear you're going to be loyal to me and to this country where you're living as a foreigner because Abraham and Sarah are there, but they're not in, they're in a foreign land that doesn't even worship the same God. And so now when we go on and we look in verse um, 25, it says, Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I would not who had done this, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. So Abraham is telling him, you know, he's coming to, you know, to him and letting him know that some of his people has taken away a well that doesn't belong to them. And so he's complaining to Abimelech about this well that his servants has taken by force from Abraham's servants. And Abimelech is saying, this is the first I've heard of it. I have no idea who's responsible for this. You know, uh, you never complained about this before. And so, um, so Abraham in, in turn comes to him with sheep and oxen um, that were, you know, he gives to Abimelech and they're making a covenant between them, an agreement between them. Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves and Abimelech said to Abraham, what mean these seven ewe lambs, which thou hast set them, uh, you know, set by themselves? He said, what is this about? And, and he said, for these seven ewe lambs shall thou take of my hand that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. 
So he's giving him these seven you lamps. And he's saying, um, he's saying, accept these. This is what it says in the NLT. Abraham replied, please accept these seven lambs to show your agreement that I dug this well. And then he named the place Beersheba, which means well of oath. And because that was where they had sworn the oath. So they make this oath there. The place is called Beersheba. And after making their covenant at, Beth she at Beersheba, Abimelech left, you know, with the commander of his army. And they returned home to the land of the Philistines. Remember we said Abimelech is a title for kings um, of the Philistines. And so they go back to the land of the Philistines. But verse 33 in the NLT says, Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba. And there he worshiped the Lord, the eternal God, or he called on the name of the Lord. And so he plants this tree. And this type of tree, um, first of all, is known to have very deep roots, like roots like 30 feet. And so, it, you know, this is... Um, almost like a memorial, you know, because he's 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 planting this tree and this is a land that his descendants are promised to. So this tree is going to grow and it could go up to 25 feet or somewhere around there. But he's planting a tree that's going to last. It has deep roots in it. And it's a like a, a, a you know, a, something, a memorable thing to honor God in that place that this is where this covenant was made with Abimelech. And so he's calling on the Lord. And it says Abraham lived as a foreigner in the Philistine country for a long time. And so this is showing us, listen, this is this is before chapter 22 when we're going to see the test of Abraham. But right now he's made this covenant. He has he has uh planted this tree. He's worshiping God. He's living in this foreign land. But we have to remember the things that have come all the way up to this point because the next chapter is going to be a test really of Abraham's faith. But up to this point, he has waited 25 years for a promised son. He and his wife, Sarah, they stepped ahead of God and tried to have a son uh, on their own uh, with Hagar. And tried to help God with his promise, but that didn't work. So now you got a single mother out here with Hagar. They're out in the wilderness, been put out of the house, but God promises to bless Ishmael, um, Hagar's son, just because she's Abraham's son, but she is not, he is not the promised son. Ishmael is not the promised son, Isaac is. So now they finally have Isaac, in chapter 21, when Abraham is a hundred years old. And now um, we are looking at what is taking place before the big test in chapter 22, when God is going to give a challenge to Abraham and we get to see how this faith pans out, how it plays out. And do we have faith like that, where we're able um, to be put to the test, almost tempted. It uses the word tempt when we get in chapter 22, but it's a test of his faith. And so let's meditate on chapter 21. Go back and look at the whole chapter. Go back and meditate on the principles here. Um, I want you to really focus on uh, the verse for your memory verse um, in verse 22, because this is when Abimelech, uh, comes to Abraham and says, God is with you. Like in everything that you do, this is the goal for our life, for our walk, is that everything we do, unbelievers will be able to see we belong to God. Unbelievers will be able to see that God is real through our walk, through our talk, through our decisions, uh, through our relationships, through our work ethics, through, through our ministering of the word, our rejoicing in the Lord, our walk of faith, everything that we do, that others would be able to see that the Lord is with us. This is the goal. This is our purpose for being here. So our memory verse is verse 22, with the focus being on the very end, God is with thee in all that thou doest. That should be our goal. So go ahead and meditate on this. 
We've done a short one today. It's not that long, but I don't want to go into chapter 22 until we are ready to go into a big chunk of that together so we can get the principles because there are many. So we're going to close out in prayer today. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, put it in the comments, um, you know, or you know, connect with me in some type of way and let me know if you have some questions, if you have some comments, or is there something that doesn't make sense to you, something that you don't understand. And so we're going to close out in prayer. I encourage you to uh, go back, meditate on these, find some other verses of scripture that connect with these, just like we talked about um, others where people could see that they were walking with God, that all they did, um, God was with them. We know with David, we know... Um, you know, with Joseph, we know with Jacob. And so in the name of Jesus, go and find out what it is, you know, that we need to be doing better so that everybody knows we belong to God and that he is for us and that he is working in us and through us, that they would want to know what must I do to be saved? They will desire a relationship with God. So we're going to close out now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and we honor you. Father, help us to do the things that we do heartily as unto you. Our walk, our talk, our decisions, where we work, in our ministry, in our home, and everything we do. Help us to be mindful of you and that we're here to bring glory to your name, to honor you with our life and to honor you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to live of a life that is sold out to you, that we are yielded vessels and that we are abiding in Christ and your word is dwelling in us richly. So have your way, perfect us, purge us and prune us. We thank you, praise, love and honor you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. And I'll see you on our next sit ups.